Do you suffer from full set syndrome? I know I do, especially when it comes to inks. Hi, I'm Ardeth, and if you've been here before, you know that Catherine Pooler inks are my favorites. So I have the full set, but I find myself reaching for the same six colors a lot, like all the time. I've seen watercolor artists create mixing charts that allow them to create large numbers of colors, even when they start with a small palette of colors. I wondered if I could do that for inks. And then of course I went overboard. A mixing chart is just a grid of colors that are mixed together. This is a big chart of my top 10 colors. I made this a few months ago and it was a really eye-opening exercise. You put the names of the colors along the top and left sides of the grid and then fill in a column and a row with each color. This diagonal row down the center is the pure color where the row and the column for each color meet. This chart gives you a ton of information but it also gives you doubles of each mix, and there are almost 60 Catherine Pooler ink colors, so I wanted to try and find a more efficient way to show this information. I'll show you how I make one of my grids in just a second, but first, here are some of the others I made. Most of Catherine's inks have been released in color families of eight, so I stuck with that, and I found if I put the names on the left and the bottom, I could create a half chart that gives only one square of combination. I put the pure colors over the names so that they're there as well, but the focus is on the mixes. Then I just flip the chart over and I do another color family of eight. This chart has two of the families in the spa colors, Paradise Found and Zen Garden, and you can see that the mixes give lots of deep saturated colors. Here's the chart of the Life of the Party and Carnival colors. On their own, these ones are brighter, but you can see that they mix well to give lots of different shades too. This is the Spring Fling collection, which is more of the pastel shades in the party line. And then this final one is Urban Oasis from the Spa collection. Now I don't love every new color mix here, and I might never use some of them, but there's a few that I really love, and the others that are kind of interesting and allow me to expand my color choices, even though I do have the full set of 58 colors. Okay, so let's make a quick chart. For this video, I'll just use my six favorite colors, my favorite Catherine Pooler rainbow, limoncello, tiki torch, party dress, flirty fuchsia, fiesta blue, and lime ricky. I've got a six by six inch piece of white cardstock here, just what I would normally use for stamping or blending so that I'll get the true colors. The first thing I did was to create a grid. I like a three quarter inch square. It's big enough to get a true sense of the color, but it's also small enough that you can fit quite a few on a chart. You want to make your grid with one square more in each direction than the number of inks you're swatching, so there's room for the color names. Mine actually made eight because of the math I was using, but I'll trim it down later. Next, I write down the names of the colors in the columns and rows. I made a mistake here and I used the top instead of the bottom, but it's okay, since I'm only going to make a half chart today. It doesn't matter what order you write them in, but you should use the same order on the two axes. To fill in the square, I used a square die and I cut it from the center of a piece of acetate to act as a stencil. This allows me to use sponge daubers to blend the colors into the squares. I start with limoncello, which is my favorite yellow. Funny story, with the pandemic there was a shortage on limoncello refills everywhere and I ended up having to buy a new ink pad when mine went dry. But Catherine recently got a restock from the manufacturer so I do have a refill in the mail on its way to me now and that is great news. I can't make my favorite rainbow without limoncello. I filled in the squares in the limoncello column all the way down, then I cleaned off the stencil and now I'm ready to move on to Tiki Torch. I leave the top one blank since I'll get the Tiki Limoncello mix on the next row of the Limoncello column. This is a good example of how two colors don't actually change each other that much, but wait until you see some of the others. Once you've finished the short Tiki Torch row, you move down and finish the column. Then I clean the stencil and I moved on to Party Dress and I do that row and column. Then I move to Flirty Fuchsia. This is one that I found really surprising. Mixing this purple with others really resulted in some amazing shades. And then you continue with the Fiesta Blue. You can see that the columns are getting shorter as the rows get longer, but trust me, in the end you'll have all the combinations on just half of the chart. Oh my gosh, when this blue mixes with the Flirty Fuchsia, you get the most gorgeous royal blue. Finally, Lime Ricky. Remember, Limoncello was just a column. The other colors were kind of L-shaped, and now Lime Ricky is just a row. And here's where I remembered that the names should have been along the bottom rather than the top, 
and then I've got room to do more mixing on the rest of the grid if I want. I won't do it now because I want to explore these colors and see how I can use them. I think the most obvious way is ink blending. Catherine's inks blend beautifully, and I'm going to make a slimline card here, which will give me tons of room to use a bunch of these really rich autumny colors. To keep my mind from getting mixed up, I'm going to jot down the mixes of the colors I want to use on a scrap piece of paper. On my bottom layer of blending, I want four-fifths of Tiki Torch and one of Party Dress to achieve the colors in my mixing chart. So I wrote those down on the bottom of the paper. Then I look to see what I would need to add on top of that bottom color. My first one will be pure Tiki Torch, and then I need to add some Party Dress, Flirty Fuchsia, Fiesta Blue, and finally Lime Ricky over the Party Dress. This will give me a brown for sure, but in autumn, shades of brown are exactly what we're looking for. So here's the blending. Remember the first layer is mostly Tiki Torch with some Party Dress on the end. I'm using the new Altenew blending tools because they're big and they blend ink onto large areas really quickly. Because this is the bottom layer, I'm keeping it as smooth as possible, but I'm not overly worried about it being perfect. And I do want to get that blend between the Tiki Torch and the Party Dress as well. I don't want stripes of the created colors, but a blend. For the next layer, I follow my little scrap paper recipe and I started with Tiki Torch. Then I moved to Party Dress, which gave me a gorgeous warm orange over the Tiki Torch. One thing to remember when you're blending with a lot of inks is to keep your surface clean when you change colors, or you'll end up creating even more colors that maybe you didn't intend. After Party Dress comes Flirty Fuchsia, and look at the gorgeous red these two colors create. This one surprised me until I realized that Flirty Fuchsia really has more pink in it rather than being a pure purple. Next is Fiesta Blue, and it's coming in over some of the Tiki Torch, but also some of that party dress, so I'm getting a rich, whiny purple. And this opens up a whole next level of possibility of mixing three colors together. But that's another video. Finally, here's the Lime Ricky over that party dress, which is giving me less of a brown and more of an olive green, which is really kind of neat. I'm going to use this marching leaf stencil from Catherine Pooler Designs to add some interest to my background. I have it just placed over the bottom of the panel and I masked the top. Next, I just go back over the blending with more color. I really should have done both the layers, the tiki and the party dress layer, as well as the top layer, but I guess I spaced it and I focused on just the top layer colors. When I got to the party dress at the top, I moved the stencil, lined up the leaves and put down the masks again and finished it off. This linear design makes it really easy to extend it to use on a slimline card. And check out these colors. Can you believe these rich results came from that original bright rainbow? To finish this card, I stamped a big Catherine Pooler thanks onto a panel of white cardstock. Then I chopped it up and I blended each letter with some of the combinations. I stamped the script U onto a circle of craft cardstock. Overall, I think this card shows how well my mixing can work with ink blending. But it also works with stamping. Let me show you. I'm using the Scattered Dots Turnabout Set from Concord and Ninth. These big dots will give you a good look at how the colors mix when you're stamping. I'm going to use the same fall colors as the previous card, so I'm inking up with Tiki Torch here. And when I stamped it down, I saw that I'm not getting a full impression. On investigation, I got a stamp with a flaw. Two of the dots are not deep enough to actually stamp properly. I kept going and I adapted my card design to deal with this, and I've emailed Concord and Ninth, who of course will stand behind their product, so that's just another good reason to order from design owners who produce high quality products and want to have a good relationship with you. In the meantime, I inked up the stamp with Party Dress to get that nice orange. It's easiest to do this if you have a stamp positioner of some kind, because to get the mix you really need to be stamping in the exact same spot. The beauty of this method is you can really fine-tune the color you get. If you think it's still too yellow, you can stamp the pink again to get a deeper orange. And that's kind of a neat idea. You really could just use two colors and build all sorts of in-between shades by using more and less of each one. I worked through turning the template, consulting my mixing chart, and using all the different color blends until I've got a nice mix of fall colors from my background. You can see the gaps where those two dots aren't stamping, but man, I love this stamp. The randomly placed dots, the perfect mix of four colors, and the flexibility to only stamp one, two, or three turns to get different looks. To finish this card, I put a big white circle in the center to cover the gaps, I added some die-cut pumpkins from the Tall Type Tag Along set, and I stamped a sentiment from Thank You For Being. Next, I'm going to use ink refills to create a watercolor background. 
I've got Tiki Torch, Party Dress, and Flirty Fuchsia here, and I'll put drops of Tiki Torch into three wells in my palette. This is just a cheap one from a dollar store. Then I'll add equal amounts of Party Dress to one and Flirty Fuchsia to another. Again, this is really an opportunity to customize your shade by changing the amount of each color in the mix, but I'm keeping it simple for today by using equal amounts. I used a dropper I recycled from an old skincare serum bottle, and I added some water to each well so that I would have enough paint. And then I spritzed my watercolor cardstock so that the paint would move easily. And it did. I probably have way too much water here, but I did get down all the colors. Check out that red. Isn't it gorgeous? Remember, there's no red in my original rainbow of ink colors, so it's really fun to have this flexibility. I dried it with my heat tool and I went back over with another layer of the paint to intensify the colors and smooth out the blend. To finish this one, I pulled out some Halloween sets from Essentials by Ellen. I stamped the bat, some stars, along with the sentiment directly on the panel, using icing on the cake again. I used the coordinating die to cut out the bat and I put a wobbler behind him for some fun and I gave him two eyes with white Nouveau drops. And while I had all my ink pads and refills on my desk, I took a few minutes to re-ink my ink pads. To do that, I just press a few drops of ink all over the ink pad and then I very lightly swirl the tip of the bottle around the foam to push the ink down into it as well as spread it around a bit. Next time I reach for my rainbow, they'll be juicy and ready to go. Here's a last look at that mixing chart. Today I focused on the autumn colors, but there's plenty of bright colors here as well, including my personal favorite mix, which is Flirty Fuchsia and Party Dress. I call it Magnificent Magenta. So if you can make all these colors with just six ink pads, imagine what you can do with all the colors you have on hand. I hope you're inspired to try it. And even if I haven't cured you of full set syndrome, there are times when it's quite useful to have this skill. Like when you're traveling or you go to a crafty day with some friends and you can't take all your inks with you. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite colors are that you would like to try with this technique. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.